Okay, this video for the Corne Project class first. Something quite dynamic took place recently, quite off the radar for me. Uh, a, somehow an engagement uh, between a Ken Ham, the uh, Answers in Genesis director, theme park where the Ark replica is, a very well-renowned uh, scholar, honorary degrees, doctorates, all types of things he's done to return the conversation to the historical reality of the book of Genesis. Now, that's not a new thing or novel for those of us who pastor the Lord's New Testament churches, but that's another story. But there's a giant in the faith, so to speak, in Christendom called William Lane Craig. And apparently Ken Ham is calling him a pseudo-intellectual. He's calling out the assertions of evolution. And I've only done a cursory review. And before we start, though, I mentioned the seminary, and I attended the seminary, so that's not fair, because if you involve me in the banter between a Ken Ham who didn't have the advantage of the seminary, and then a William Lane Craig who didn't have the advantage of the seminary, then stepping into the conversation and evaluating rather than accusing, because there's a lot of uh, vitriol and very pleasant, if you will, they're acting very civil, but the charges are very severe. Uh, William Lane Craig questioning uh, the veracity of a young earther and questioning hermeneutics and calling uh, young earth assertions just some type of gymnastics. And then, of course, Ken Ham speaking in ways of William Lane Craig that, that might be correct, but I would prefer, as you all have been trained, to first evaluate, never negate. So let's ever evaluate, never negate. And then speaking of the seminary, our president, Dr. Roger Copeland of the Missionary Baptist Seminary, but it's just called the seminary because it's the world's leading seminary. So all we have to do is say the seminary. It's like saying Harvard. We don't have to say anything else. We don't have to say anything more. It speaks for itself. It's the oldest Bible school in the state of Arkansas, and it has produce more of the most renowned and unsurpassed uh, breakthroughs in Bible research history. Uh, they've trained pastors to go out and literally uh, use the Bible to advance the Great Commission to assure the interest of Christ in New Testament churches, the ecclesias, uh, the interests of Christ are met, namely that his father receives the glory by Christ in that ecclesia. So uh, he said in here, we ask you to join with us in praying God would call men to preach and that men would obey his call. You can be a tremendous help to us if you will recommend our seminary to others. We need your help in pointing others to us. So I'll include all of this and uh, let you know about this data. I'll put it in the description, but I'll refer to the seminary and the advantages. So what are the advantages? Well, first, we learn not to accuse because we're given uh, the tools and the resource. Because if we simply wanted to accuse, categorize from the word categoria, then you really don't need to study. You can just pick a side. And if you're really shrewd at the game of accusing others, which, you know, in the Bible, the accusers of the brethren, the accuser of the brethren ultimately is the diabolical one, the devil himself. And he's very mentally clever. So as long as people are willing to uh, banter, uh, fight, argue, if you call it, as one person described our Western world as an argumentative culture, then accusations will come. And you'll notice there's a lot of energy to accuse because that energy is not really depleted in study. So let's find out, because one thing that concerned me about some of the comments of Dr. William Lane Craig, for example, was he was insisting that the book of Genesis could not be taken seriously in a uh, a manner that would show respect in any scientific perspective. However, the fields of science originated from theology, which originated from the Bible. So I'm not sure what he's missing there, but without the Bible, we would have had no theology. Without theology, we'd have no uh, calculus, for example. We'd have no physics or chemistry. All those are products of theology, which makes the uh, fields of science branches of theology. So science is theological and evolution is not scientific. Now that's just a fact. And uh, But he began to advocate different types of evolution. And of course, in research parameters, that's what we're trained, for example, as uh, research 
assistant, for example, uh, for example, I'm just one of the research assistants for Dr. John Penn. I've often mentioned my colleague and friend who discipled me, Dr. Eddie Johnson, and he's a research assistant. We collaborate. Dr. Robert Kelly, he formerly of the seminary, we collaborate. Anyway, I talk to colleagues and we confer collaboratively reason and collectively learn, and that's an ongoing. Uh, so uh, research parameters, for example, if you wanted to start with this issue of creationism and uh, people say, well, we believe in a literal six-day creation. Well, you're just really getting started. Now, this is very powerful data, these little letters here, because I remind you that in Biblical Hebrew, this is a uh, phonetic, it's a sound, it's a pictographic, and it's numeric. So just this letter here, for example, equals the number one and also 1,000. But as you would learn if you attend the seminary, that if it equals one and also 1,000, then it equals 1,000 and also one. I know that because the professor of hermeneutics, the holistic historical hermeneutic process he taught, uh, made that real clear. But let's notice, let's think of these, well, I don't need to draw it, I already drew the lines. Think of these boundaries as parameters. These are measures alongside. So as we set up our research parameters, let's just say, instead of saying you believe in six literal 24-hour days, just set it up as a research parameter. And that's how Dr. John Penn approaches it. Of course, having a science background uh, with physics, uh, one of his first, I believe it was a physics professor, was one of the first to evaluate moon rocks that were returned uh, for the first time in the, uh, I guess it would have been 69, 70, somewhere in there. And then one of his professors was also involved in feedback and evaluation of the development of computers back when they were large, uh, monstrous machines, I suppose. So his background and then in uh, hermeneutics, the science of interpretation. So this is just a research parameter. So six literal days. Number two, uh, we have chronological. And we also have biological. And we have geological. Now these two, for example, we won't need botanical, but that's in the Bible. We have um, a decay rate of a fig tree that was immediate and that would have taken days and perhaps weeks to have decayed uh, to the point it was instantly. We also have in water uh, transformed uh, into wine in an immediate process that would have taken quite some time uh, first, how to move water to wine, and then how to take, that is, into grape juice, and then how to take that into whatever that process is to achieve wine. But we'll just stay with those two. But these are all research parameters, and uh, we have the Genesis 1-1, uh, and then we have, of course, so we have the Chapter 1 account, for example, chapter one account, and that's in beginning. That's the in beginning account. Now this is rather serious because some of the things Dr. William Lane Craig introduces suggest and by implication that people can draw from it, uh, that is inferences, that somehow God co-depended upon a pre-existing uh, man or indigenous evolution, which says there was something there from which God then produced, which again, it begs the question, we just continue to go back, but we have the beginning in the beginning. We don't need to say in the beginning, there was something before the beginning and beginning before the beginning. We just, it, it really, it was illogical. That, uh, I'm not certain, uh, unless listening to more of his material or, or conversations or reading something about it. I, I don't know what would cause in the beginning to be insufficient, but we have uh, also here under Genesis 1-1 a parameter. We have instantaneity. 
and then we have B, the immutability of God. Okay, so immutability changes not. That's Malachi 3, 6, instantaneity. That's Isaiah 48, 3. Now we have the Genesis 1 in beginning, uh, verse 4. We have another parameter. We have Genesis 2, chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, the end time in time creation and of course then we have uh, five we have Moses the author of Genesis so we have the author of Genesis and we also have that he's also and also uh, author of Psalm 90 remember Psalm 90 where we have 90% 90% of the lifespan of 100% of humanity was removed. That was a judgment against sin prior to the flood. The degeneration, you can read about the first three chapters of Romans, and you can see how bad man left to himself. So man had his day, his thousand-year lifespan. And you remember uh, Adam died Again, number six. Oh, we also we have, uh, we'll do this. Uh, Peter, remember he was that baptized Jew. His writings, he defined that word Aleph, that letter Aleph. Sorry, I keep, I have, I've learned how to write it two different ways, so I'm just going to stick with that Sephardic way where it says uh, equals one and also 1,000. Uh, Peter said, uh, well, it's also 1,000 and also one day, that is, and one day. So one day is a 1,000 years. Peter said that. But he was using what we already knew with the letter Aleph, one as, as, and also 1,000, 1,000 also one. So uh, he wrote it out, Peter did, that one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. So we have that baptized Jew. We have the Hebrew language. So we now have B, uh, as people always say, age is a number. Is a number. That's one of the advantages, again, of the seminary, the, specifically the Missionary Baptist Seminary. Uh, its current faculty, professors, pastors, and continue to labor and toil. Pastors retired, if you call continuing to produce work more voluminous than he's ever done before. For example, Dr. John Penn, uh, that's not retirement, that's continuing to labor. Uh, he says age is but a number. That's kind of a statement we're all familiar with. And to remind you, parameters are the characteristics of populations. They describe the population and research design. One is often interested in estimating uh, certain parameters. We want conclusions. We want to govern that so we get a context, if you will, for our research. But in response to William Lane Craig, we can, if we want to say, and we say we want to demonstrate that there's six literal 24-hour days, we can acknowledge the chronological, the biological, geological. We can acknowledge Genesis 1, chapter 1, account of creation in beginning. We can keep instantaneity, immutability of God. Look at Genesis 2, where we have an end time uh, creation demarcated from Genesis 1 1. We then have uh, number 6, uh, literal, literal 360 day. Prophetic, some call it that, prophetic year. Again, these are our parameters. And then number seven, let's say we will not, we will not, we will not use day, age, or pre established gap theories. Okay, so if that's true, then we will not, we will be neither young or old earthers. Well, now that, that really tightens our parameters. It, it drives us, if you will, focuses us to the text 
and of course you noticing the text now and many other occasions in which we've covered this. If you've never studied it before, these are our research parameters. So this is what we would do before we even introduce ourselves to this conversation, but I recommend you go and listen to the banter between the two. Uh, notice what Ken Ham is guarding and, and trying to uh, champion. Notice what William Lane Craig is doing. He seems to be much more comfortable I would say almost aloof, aloof, aloof uh, a little bit removed from uh, the text and what we know uh, it to be. It's a lot more than, it's more than just saying you believe the text is literal or historical. Uh, it has it has something to say or it doesn't. If it has something to say that's a little somewhat more profound, let's say, than William Lane Craig's descriptions, and then as a uh, little bit more than uh, Ken Ham's concerns, then that would help us move forward in appreciating exactly what we want to accomplish. So this is uh, part one of Ken Ham or William Lane Craig, and you have a blessed day, and we'll just start, and I'll go to part two next.